and welcome to this video. I'd like to go over how to make a brush like this. Um, in contrast to my last video, this uses a split line in order to make this. And in, my, in another video, I would intend on making another one that would use an equation-driven surface spline. So hopefully you'll have three useful ways of making brushes, which of course are just principles on making what you really want to make. So uh, let's get into this one. Of course, some of the limited functionality is you don't have that round bristle head like that uh, we got in the last video using a body pattern uh, driven by curves. So let's get started on how to make this one. I'm going to start a new part. And we'll start by sketching on the top plane, making an ellipse. And from here I can constrain this point to vertical. And we'll do a whoops. We'll do a typical something like six by four. Of course I had the wrong thing selected there. Six by four. And we'll be fully constrained. And now I can sketch on my um, let's say front plane. And I'll use a three-point arc and go from edge to edge of my ellipse. I don't think that quite caught on. And I can give this a dimension of, say, three on the radius, which looks to be about right. Now I will sketch on my right plane with another three-point arc. And I'll select the midpoint and uh, go to my other sketch and pierce. So it'll be fully defined. Now, uh, before I made a body pattern off of these curves, but now I don't have to worry about making a bristle. I'll simply go to surfaces, filled surface. I'll choose this as my uh, boundary and these as my constraints. And we have a surface. From here, I can select this edge and choose uh, fill surface. And now I can knit my surface by creating a solid and merging these entities. So now that I've got a solid to work with, this next step is a little bit tricky. I still want to utilize the features of the surface menu, but I don't have a surface, I have a solid. So I simply choose this face, knit surface, and merge entities. And now I've got a surface that I can work with. So I can utilize some of the features on my surface menu. And what I would like to do here is um, thicken this face a distance of an inch or whatever I want my rough length of my bristles to be. So now that I've merged this one inch, I've got um, something I can work with. I'll go to my top plane and start mapping out a sketch here. And this will be, say, a bristle on the center face of my brush. I'll make this 40 thou thick. That's probably about a millimeter in diameter for all of you uh, metric people out there. Linear sketch pattern. We'll go along the x-axis and we'll choose, of course, this entity. And I'm going to make this a distance of 0.5. And I'll just go until I surpass my, um, my face over here. I'll do that with one dimension to constrain, half an inch. I'm going to make another pattern, linear sketch pattern. I'll choose this entity, 0 0.5, but this time in the opposite direction. And again, continue until I am off my face. One dimension to constraint, again, half an inch. Now I can select everything that I've made, linear sketch pattern. And this time I'll go about my Y axis. And so I'll say two, and we'll go to 0 0.5 and bring my X pattern down to 1 so that it's not a factor here. 
and make my distance 0 0.5 and again continue until whoops wrong box though continue until I've come off the face right there should be fine again one dimension to constraint and now I can again for last time select what I've created linear sketch pattern and again on the x-axis we'll go to one the y-axis will go to two we'll go a dimension of 0 0.5 in the opposite direction down here and go until I'm off my face here one dimension to constrain and we have created everything that we need for a split line so now that we're ready to create a split line if you've never done a split line before this is in essence what it is it's very similar to a wrap that we have um, on our features menu a split line will take a sketch project it upon a surface in this case this uh, kind of swoopy surface and everywhere where the sketch projects onto, it splits that surface. It doesn't cut or anything, it doesn't remove or add material, it simply creates a split on that surface. So uh, I'll choose curves, split line, this sketch onto this face, and we choose projection in this case. And uh, as you can see, now this surface is split into multiple surfaces. Um, anywhere that the sketch would have projected onto. So now that we have that, I'm going to go to uh, my surfaces menu. And again, I'm in a situation where I have a solid and I want to utilize some of the features on my surfaces menu. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another surface. I'll choose this face and knit surface once again. We'll merge entities and there I have a surface that I can work with you can see that surface kind of peering underneath that solid uh, I'm going to choose a thickened cut if you've never done a thickened cut before imagine an extruded cut with surfaces and you may think okay if I can do an extruded cut with a surface versus off of a sketch what's the difference and the difference is the thickened cut uh, can work with curved surfaces, whereas the extruded cut can only go straight off of a sketch. So with this thickened cut, I have uh, my surface selected here. And of course I can go above, as we see here, I can cut below, which we don't see, or I can go above and below. I'll choose the latter and make my distance 0.99 inches. And there I have a completed cut. There's a few things to keep in mind. If you've worked with different dimensions, you may have a menu that is asking you which bodies to keep. Choose selected bodies and choose body one. Delete all other bodies. Uh, I'll show you an example of that. And you may also, if you've done different dimensions than I have, may have partial bristles sticking out. Um, so you may want to adjust your sketch to cover you know, have whole bristles, not half of a bristle. So let's go um, adjust our sketch to give you an example of what I'm talking about here. We'll go to this original sketch, right? This is the sketch that you want to adjust if you have partial bristles. And you can do something like um, 6.05 and 4.05. And you may get uh, a rebuild error if uh, you're like me and had it perfect the first time. And there's a rebuild error as expected. So if I go to my cut thicken and reselect my surface, you can kind of see I, I've got a partial bristle right here. And so when I go to complete this cut thicken, it's asking me what bodies to keep. So this is the, the example that I was hoping to go with. And I'm going to choose selected bodies, body one, okay. And as you can see, I've got that uh, partial bristle. So again, there are several options here. 
Um, I think I'm going to go to my sketch one and I'll keep that bristle because I like having those bristles on the very end and do something like 6.06 .06. and adding 10 thou on each side. We'll see where that leaves us. Still got a partial bristle. So we'll up it just a hair more to something like 6.08 and rebuild. And that gives us a good bristle on this edge and a good bristle on this edge. So let's go ahead and go with, um, with this. So we've successfully generated a solid with bristles. I'm going to sketch on my top plane. And let's finish up the body of this comb. There's a slight nuance that I want to show you when we finish up the body that could be important to take into consideration. I'm going to create my ellipse and create my final outer dimensions of this comb. We'll do something like uh, seven inches looks okay. Seven by five, maybe. If I did 6.5, you know, I, I really like the way that looks 4.5 over here. That should be fine. And then I have to constrain this upper point vertical to my origin. Now I'll make a three point arc. And I could probably give this a dimension of, I think I think four might look kind of cool. I'll do a tangent arc and I can make these points vertical to my origin and I can make this endpoint vertical to my origin by doing not just the endpoint but also the, the center vertical to my origin that simply verifies that my three point arc is horizontal at the very end and that allows me to mirror it. I'll make this a radius of 1.5 and give an overall distance from the center to the origin, a distance of something like seven. And that should be pretty good. We'll finish off by making um, a tangent relationship. Now that I'm fully constrained, I can grab a center line and move it up to my origin and simply save time by mirroring this entity and this entity about this line and using a power trim here. So now that I've got uh, somewhat of a brush looking thing, that's looking a little bit small. Maybe I'll do something like nine inches and a radius of, mm, we'll go with seven looks decent and maybe make this 8.5. There's my brush and I can run my extrusion. We'll go blind one inch in the up opposite direction. Now I've got one nuance before I add some fillets. In fact, I'll show you what the, what the finished product looks like. Fill it here, fill it here. We've extruded one inch, so if I make them both um, half an inch, it should look decently round. And I've got what looks to be an okay ending brush, but my problem is that because I have thickened, I've got this little edge that is not realistic at all. So let's make a few adjustments here. The first thing that I want to do is roll back prior to my fillet, and we'll get a slight rebuild error in the fillet, but that's okay because that's an easy fix. I'm going to sketch on this face. And when I do, I will convert entities. So now I've got a sketch running all around the end of my face. And I can simply, there's many ways to deal with this problem. I'm showing you just one way. I'm going to extrude up to vertex and choose instead of up to vertex. Sometimes up to vertex will work, but if that doesn't work, I can choose up to surface. And in my experience of making combs, either up to vertex or if that doesn't work, up to surface will. So there's um, 
there's how you can deal with that. And now I'll uh, adjust my sketch here. Well, maybe my fillet will work. It did remember, but we're we're pretty tight on that face. It may not be very realistic, so I'll make a uh, simple adjustment to my uh, final sketch on this boss extrusion by saying something like 4.75 and 6.75 and that's the beauty of parametric modeling you can go back and make whatever adjustments you want to be a little bit more realistic that works I still don't like that so I want to edit this feature even more I think uh, I was onto something when I said 5 by 7 That's a little bit better. I, I think I might want to go even larger than that, but I think that's probably a good example uh, for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. Again, this is using split line, which allows us to make these bristles and then make only small adjustments to uh, to get the bristles to, com to fit completely. And then we use some more advanced surfacing techniques to actually uh, get the bristles to come out. So again, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.